Shaka Hislop, this was not something that I don't think many people expected. Carlo Ancelotti back to Real Madrid. What were your feelings about this when you woke up this morning and saw the news? Um, I, I wasn't quite sure what to make of it. I'll be, I'll be honest with you, Mark. Given that Ancelotti was there, had some successes there, but then was fired, you know, and, and you, you just wonder. Um, as Antonio Perez tries to guide Real Madrid through whatever the next stages uh, for, for this club are, you ask yourself, you know, why go back there, both from, from a Perez point of view and an Ancelotti point of view? While you can't criticise Real Madrid and the successes that they've had since, particularly under, under Zinedine Zidane, it, it just feels like it, it still feels so soon. You know, I, I know with some years departed since, since Ancelotti has left, but it just feels so soon. And so you wonder the thinking behind it. Well, he's still held in pretty high regard by the supporters for winning La Decima, mm. but he never won La Liga. And his time overall at Real Madrid, first time around, could be summed up how by you? Um, Listen, I, I think whenever you talk about Real Madrid, you have to talk about the big picture of what that club is. Not just in terms of uh, the aura around the club, around Galacticos and the expectation around it, but it's managing some of those personalities, managing some of their own um, professional responsibilities to both their clubs and their sponsors. And more to the point, it's around man managing Frontino Perez and that board and their own expectations and um, how they run the club and how they want to see the club progress and this constant turnover of managers that we've seen in pursuit of perpetual success without ever taking a step back to figure out what, what comes next and to put the right pieces in place. The one thing you have to say about Ancelotti is he will, he will serve that club well. He's not going to rock the boat. He's not going to come out in the press and... and be overly scathing uh, towards Perez or, or anybody else. Um, so it, it ticks a lot of boxes just in terms of maintaining that aura around the president, keeping his ego um, as, as inflated as, as he quite clearly needs it to be. Um, so you see why Ancelotti will always be, will always be top of, of many big clubs lists in terms of wanting a manager. Well, you've got to remember as well, one of Ancelotti's assistants first time round was the man that's just been at Real Madrid, Zinedine Zidane. Mm -hmm. Look, the, the, the holy grail for any top owner of a football club in, in Europe is the Champions League. He would love to win La Liga, of course, but given the choice, they have 13 and a little patch on the side of their sleeve, which indicates Champions Leagues. And Ancelotti knows how to get it done and not just with Real Madrid. So... Does the whole kind of appointment that's likely to happen, is it going to be summed up by the fact that they're getting a coach that knows how to, big, uh, to win the big one? Yeah, listen, listen and nobody can question uh, Ancelotti's pedigree. Or maybe if you want to look at Everton and, and their couple of finishes since, since, since he's been there, very much mid-table. Um, but aside from that, you look at everywhere he's been, the clubs he's managed, the same kind of expectation that I talk about um, with Perez and Real Madrid, he had at PSG. He had at AC Milan, less or so at, at, at Napoli. But so he understands managing a big club. Um, so you, you, see why, you, you see why he will, it will always be uh, interesting and attractive to so many. But for Real Madrid, who built their reputation, a global reputation around the Champions League and their successes in it, but then you saw Zinedine Zidane come out and say that they wanted to win the league. And um, this, is a, this is a manager who won the Champions League three times running, saying that the bread and butter to a football club is, is winning the league. And it's time for Real Madrid to have that focus or to refine that, that focus. They failed in both the league just this time around in the Champions League again, and maybe that somehow spelled the end to, to Zinedine Zidane, a decision I, I still don't understand, but Florentino Perez will always be Florentino Perez. Uh, and now they're, they're looking for, for somebody to come back in, recognising the importance of the Champions League, and maybe going that one step further in, in delivering uh, La Liga. 
but you know that's that's a, a project in itself which oftentimes not many managers are affording time to do or to deal with at, in Madrid. Patience, come on now. Uh, Carlo Ancelotti's book is, is a good read. I'm not sure it's a good read for Gareth Bale. What's he thinking right now with this news? I don't know. Who, who knows what Gal, Gareth Bale is thinking <laughs> with, with any news, in all honesty. Listen, um, you know, Bale said towards the back end of, of the season that he was just at, at Spurs to get some game time, to get himself fit uh, ahead of the Euros. We will see what happens with Spurs and what manager comes in and uh, and what their plans are. But right now, Gareth Bale is returning to Madrid. And that's a conundrum that a lot of managers have had to deal with, have, have, have tried to figure out. Uh, we'll see where that goes. There, there are others similarly, and I'm thinking of Eden Hazard here, um, in, in similar situations that whoever comes in somehow has to find uh, a balancing act for in appeasing these highly paid players who there may not be many suitors for and the expectation of a fan base and a board that expects Real Madrid to win every single title every single year. Finally, Shaq, uh, he was paid by all accounts around $15 million, um, about £12.5 million, pounds, Carlo Ancelotti by Everton. Is he still value for money? Uh Yes, I, I think having Ancelotti in that dress room is, is a booster to Everton. And, and as I mentioned before, maybe the two league finishes, 12th and, and 10th, don't really point out to value for money. But you look at the players that he was able to bring in, most notably James Rodriguez. I think with a, a, another, another, you know, another transfer window, he, could have, he can possibly do a whole lot more in attracting that kind of world-class sought after talent um, to the blue side of, of, of Merseyside. We will see where that goes. But, um, but I, I, I don't question Ancelotti's pedigree at all. And we'll leave Carlo's replacement at Everton if he goes for another day. Thanks, Jack. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.